Mashabata, Mashapanasha, Zakaha Kodeshaba, Shubab Lahatawara, La Ayara, Kobal Haban, Kobal Havuak, Haya Awa, Haya Salam, Lamar Mayan Hamalek, Iraya Sala, Zahadawa, Iwa Parath Hagawayam, Yakal Nasayawan, Allah Bahadam, Allah Bahasu. Allah Bahada, Allah Bahasu, Alleluia, Barakasu, Barakasu, Allow ya, Allow ya, Allow ya, Allow ya, Allow ya, Allow ya, Awala ya, Awala ya, Awala ya, Allah Bahasu, Allah Bahada, Allah Bahasu, Allah Bahada, Allah Bahasu. Hallelujah, the quasas of Pah, Kobal Havuak, Kobal Havuak, Kobal Havuak, Kobal Havuak, Hallelujah. Babylon is falling, no more time for us to leave. They can't shake my faith, my book got its hands on me. It's power in the blue, oh, hard in me to leave. Allah Baha down beside you, die for you and me. Uh, Babylon is falling, no more time. Keeping it simple. How's everybody doing this morning? How's everybody doing this morning? I hope the most I have truly blessed you over and abundantly with love, kindness, and joy. I hope the most I really truly have blessed you with wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word. I hope he really truly have. I hope that you have gotten all the hours of the clients or everything that you needed for this week to be the way you want to be. I hope that the Most High have really truly blessed you and your offsprings over and abundantly with love, kindness, and joy. I hope that he has, I hope the spirit of Ruach HaKadish have really opened your eyes up and your offspring eyes up to what's really going on in the world today. You know, my week has been an okay week this week. I really can't complain. I won't complain. Um, I know that um, we don't have much time um, in America. We don't have much, America don't have much time. Um, I hope that you have bought your food that you can buy. I hope that you have bought all the ammo that you can get. I hope that you have bought the weapons that you can have. I hope both that you have bought water and emergency supplies that you have been able to get. I hope that you really truly have been preparing for this physically and I hope you've been preparing for this spiritually what's been ready to hit the earth. And I'm going to read you some stuff too about politics too but I hope you really have been truly you know but been preparing yourself for this if you haven't got no weapons if you haven't got no gun training I'm not gonna say it's too late but the level that you could have been at and the level that you will be at is it's a great big difference um, you know I do believe in the most high but I'm 
the most I have gave me understanding to be able to function in this reality and know that, hey, I am may have to do some things that I don't really want to do, but I got to do it to be saved, you know. So I hope that you all are trying to grow food. I hope that you're doing things that, that will preserve your you and your family. Um, I think that you're an unwise person if you say that the Most High going to save me. I think you're a very unwise person if you say that. Yes, he may put people in your life to help you. But it's up to you to do the work to be saved. Even when it comes down to you spiritually, you still have to do the spiritual work to be saved. From your definition of the word saved. But um, let us go ahead and get started this morning on Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. And it reads, And El spake all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah thy El, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and thou shalt have no other Els before me. And thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, the El, am an angry El, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah, the El, in vain, for he will not hold you guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor. And do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy El. In it thou shalt not do any works, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughter, thy manservants, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, if Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy day belong upon the land which Yahuwah thy El giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors, and thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Down to your kingdom, power to your glory forever and ever. So let it be. Amen, amen, amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, Facebook may be going in and out. We don't know if it's the service. We don't know if it's the internet. We don't know if they're just hating on me. We don't know. So, um, you know, just work with us a little bit. But let me read you a couple of things about the migration, the immigration or the migration of the immigrants that's coming into the U.S. For those people who are voting for Democrats, you got to understand that the Democrats have allowed over, say, 5 million immigrants to come into the United States. Okay? Understand that the Democrat or the Republican Party has not passed any legislations for you, black people in America, to protect you against anything. They have not passed any laws or any legislations to protect you specifically in anything. Okay, so it's called the S.505 S. Immigration Parole Reform Act. Okay, the United States Senate has passed an Immigration Parole Reform Act. And it says this bill limits the authority of the Department of Homeland Security to grant immigration parole. It means give official permission to it for an individual to enter and temporarily remain in the United States. That means that the United States have granted these immigrants the right to live here in the United States of America. 
that have given them the right to be able to live here in America. That's what your Congress and Senator have done for us because they are allowing all these immigrants to come into the United States, but they made sure that to help these immigrants, they passed laws to be able to make sure that these immigrants will be able to stay into the United States. Okay? But they never do anything for you as a people. Now, let me go to the AP. The AP News, an AP, AP website. Hopefully it'll come up. Okay, it's AP um, website, and it's uh, it came out. What day did it come out? I guess this is just an article. Let me see. I can't find it. Let me find it. Um, the word AP means Associated Press. Associated Press came. Um, this article came out when, okay, I guess it came out September the 23rd, 2023, but I'm not for sure, but it's on the AP website, and they, they did a fact check, because people were saying that the immigrant received $9,000 a month to be able to come into the United States. Some people say that the immigrants receive $5,000 a month while they was here in America. Some people say they received $2,200 a month to be able to come in here into America. But we all know that up in New York, they put the immigrants in the best and the finest hotels they, they could have, and they put them in the, up in New York. But we do know that they gave them money, just as well as in Chicago. We do know that when they took them to Chicago, they put them in the black communities. And then they gave them a lot of money to be able to stay in the black communities. But understand that the United States government has never done anything for you as a black community. But here you are getting ready to vote for these people in November who allow these immigrants to come into the countries. And then the United States government has given them monies for them to be able to stay in this country for a long period of time. But let me read you something. It says, No migrants do not receive $2,200 each month from the federal government. Okay, it says, Claims Biden administration is giving people who entered in the U.S. illegal payments of $2,200 per month. They're arguing about the issue of the $2,200 a month. They're not saying that they did not give them money. They said that they, they did not give them the specific amount of money that people are stating. But understand that the black community have been deprived for a long period of time and the United States government has not done anything for you. But they gave them some, wow. but they gave them some money. It says the AP, um, what is that? They're trying to climb. Okay, it says, now they're doing, this is called a fact check. They're trying to go with the numbers. They're dealing with the numbers. They're not dealing with the actions. Okay. It says, the AP assessment falls. People who entered into the U.S. illegally are not eligible for federal cash assistance with the exception of certain Cubans, Cubans and Haitians. Immigrants, experts told the um, Associated Press, the refugees are people granted asylum as well as some other humanitarian migrants are entitled to certain public benefits. They're going to automatically get these benefits as long as they consider themselves seeking asylum. And the people who seek asylum are they saying that these people are running from a devastating crisis in their country. Okay? It says that um, as well as other um, humanitarian migrants. Listen to that part. As well as some other humanitarian migrants are entitled to certain public benefits. Listen to this. Including cash assistance related to the initial resettlement. Though it is not as high, though it is not as high 
as $2,200 each month. Just like when the Ukrainians came over here, they gave the Ukrainians money. Just like the Palestinians, when they come over here, they're going to give them money. It's just like when all the migrants that come over here to this country, the United States government give these migrants money. They give them money so that they can get on their feet and be able to live here in America. And they haven't and they haven't did anything. This United States government haven't done anything for blacks. But you as a Democrat or you as a black person, you go down there and give these people your vote when they don't do anything for your community. Okay, then it says this right here. It says the social media users are falsely claiming that people in the USE illegally receive thousands of dollars in monthly payments from the federal government. An issue that has been one tweet of state according to a release by legal migration groups. The Biden administration is giving some illegal aliens payment of $2,200 per month. Now, the government is giving people $2,200 a month to come over here and stay in America. They're not just going to give them, they're not just giving them money to stay here in America. They're going to fast track them to become U.S. citizens. And they're going to fast track them to be able to help them get loans and all this stuff. It says, the information cited and tweeted was published by the American Americans for Legal Immigrations, the PAC. Okay, it says halfway through the segment discussing the Russia-Ukraine war, McGruger said that every uh, uh, alleged uh, asylum seeker immigrant, my immigrant, illegal immigrant, poured through the borders of Texas or elsewhere is given a monthly payment of twenty-two hundred dollars a month. Now, how is this migration is going to help you? How is this, this migration is going to hurt black people? How is this migration is going to help black people? Okay? I want on to digest. Help or hurt. It's going to hurt. It's not going to help. It's going to hurt. The digest, D-I-G-E-S-T. This article came out, uh, I think this is an article in 2020. Uh, we don't have it. But let me tell you what happens when we have a large number of migrant immigrants coming into the country. And who is affected by the immigrants. Okay, we first got to understand that these immigrants, these Ukrainians, these Palestinians, these people that are coming in from the south of the border, which has probably been over 5 million, in the last couple of years, they are receiving taxpayers' money. Understand that first. Every time that you pay something to the United States government, all half some of this portion of that money is going over is helping to be able to support these migrants. Understand that. There's ninety billion dollars that they're gonna send over to the state of Israel. There's money that the, now I'm not gonna give you a number, but the money they're getting ready to send over to the state of Israel, the money they send over to Ukraine, all this is going to help other nations of people, and not the African American people. You are not going to benefit from anything that the United States government is is doing at this point in time, but you're gonna go out and be willing to give these people your vote. When they haven't done anything for you. But let me read you something. Okay, it says, The 1980 to 2000 immigrants influx. Therefore, generally explain about 20 to 60% of the decline in wages. The more immigrants you have coming to this country, it affects people's wages here in the United States. And the reason why it affects people's wages here in the United States is because the simple fact is now that they can go get people and pay people or lower wages to do the same job that you are doing. Understand that. That's the first thing. Second, okay, it says 25% decline in employment. 
and 10% of the rises in incarceration rate among blacks with a high school education or lower. So what happens when immigration comes, immigrants come into the country, they don't just bring down the wages, they, they affect the employment of black people. They, the corporations and these businesses are saying, why should I continue to have and hire a black man when I can go hire these immigrants that's coming into the country and I can pay them a lower wages? So what in terms happens? What in terms happens is that black young black men don't who who didn't have a father in their life, who don't have an education, who don't have structure, what he turned to? Violence, crime, all these other activities. So what happens? Incarceration increased because what they do, the United States government in in the um in the justice system, go out and intentionally put black men in jail. Because I was looking at it, I was listening to something this week, where the, everybody knows in the justice system that the j criminal justice system is racist. They intentionally hire people who are racist and corrupt so that they can continue to keep the system going. If they are not hiring white racist people who continue to keep the system going, they will hire African American men or Puerto Rican men or whoever else who will be on the bandwagon of keeping the system going. Because they, those people will be threatened that you'll lose your pension if you don't continue and stay on the side of us. So, when you're looking at it, when you're looking at this immigration and this immigrants coming in, it affects blacks on every level. And what they do then is they don't push them into the Europeans or, or Chinese or anybody else's community. What they do is they'll push the immigrants into the black community. They'll push the immigrants into the black community so that they can start pushing the black community out of their own community. And this is the United States government. This is the Democratic Party that is allowing all these things to happen. And who it affects the most? Blacks. And then what blacks continue to do? They continue to go vote for this same criminal system that is continuing to put them in this position that they're in. And I'm going to tell you something. Black people, African American people, Hebrew people, if you don't get your act together in the next six months to eight months, you're going to be doom and gloom. I understand that those five million, those five million or ten million immigrants that are coming over to the country, it's going to be hard to get rid of us. But that's slow. But, but you also got to look at AI technology is taking away a lot of people's jobs as well. So, you're not being affected by the immigration, but you're also being affected by AI. And then you're not just being affected by AI, you're being affected by the, situ the decision you made three or four years ago, which is affecting your health. Mm -hmm. So, you being attacked on every level, or we being attacked on every level, and if we, as an inclusive, don't get our act together... There won't be a, a black community no more. We'll be living in shelters. We'll be, leaving, we'll be homeless. So I'm just letting you know. It says almost everybody knows that in the, last, in the past 40 years, the real wage and job prospects of, for low-skilled men understand that most people, most African-American men working in blue-collar jobs, low-skilled jobs, especially low-skilled minority workers, have fallen. The reason why the low-skilled jobs have fallen is because they're bringing in AI and computers to do your jobs. They're shipping all the other manufacturing jobs out of the country, so you won't have nothing here to do, your, do the work. So when you're going out there voting for these people, you under, I want you to understand that you're bringing death 
to you and to your family and to your community. Because if you look in your community today, it's very few blacks own businesses in their own community. You got the Indians for the gas station. You got the Chinese for the food and the hair and the beauty salon. Beauty, you got the they got the nails. You got the grocery stores, but their main their main grocery stores is Kroger, Walmart, and uh, Aldi's. But but then you don't have nothing that you own. You may have one or two um, wing shops in your community or barber shops or hair salon, but that's all you have. We're not producing anything. So, I'm just letting you know, blacks, if you don't, Hebrews, Israelites, black people, you don't get your stuff together in the next six months. If you don't start coming together as a whole, we're going to be jacked up. Believe that. Especially when they bring cut the power off and all this other stuff. We're going to be jacked up. So that's it for the the um for the for your voting. You're gonna vote for these people who continually to kill you. Okay, so let us go to Matthews chapter seven. Because this verse here, this what I'm teaching on today, is that I want you to understand something. Matthews chapter seven. What am I thinking? Matthew chapter 7. Now, I've taught on this once before. And it's hard. You heard it plenty of times. But the Most High just got me doing it today. He got me doing it this week. Because I had an experience this week where I was trying to talk to this guy. And the guy started running from me. Because he didn't want to hear what I had to say. And... I told the guy, I said, listen, you don't have to run from me no more. I just won't talk to you about that no more. I just won't talk to you about it no more. You ain't got to run from me as if I'm bringing a knife to your throat. I'm trying to help the guy do have survival skills and go to the weapon, gun range and all that. He didn't want to hear it. But the most I always told me in the back of my head, you can't help everybody. So this is a very familiar passage, Matthew chapter 7. And it's talking about judging people. Talking about judging people. And this is Yahshua talking to his disciples. And it's all about your actions. It's all about how you should treat people. It's all about that. This is what Jesus is talking about. Yahshua is talking about how we should treat people. Or how we should do things. Okay, and I want to go ahead and give you the key verse today. The key, I'm going to read the whole thing. The key verse is verse 6. The key verse is verse 6. It says, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Least they trample them under their feet and turn again and rent you. Understand that. Let me read it over. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Least they tremble, trample them under their feet and turn again and rent you. If I make and I'm a, if if the word rent, let me see what the word rent means. R e n t, rent. The word rent means. Huh? R e n t. R e n d. Huh? Rend. Rend you. Okay. <laughs> it means to um to break. It means to wreck. It means to crack. That is especially to slander. It's a separation of parts. Being is intense. Okay, it means to shatter. It means to go against. Argue, fuss, and fight. Okay, it means it's going to come back against you, basically. 
it's going to come back against you. Okay? So if I may give a title of the text today, the title of the text today is, I got to get myself together. That's the title of the text. I got to get myself together. I got to get myself together before I help other people. I want us to take heed to that. I got to get myself together before I help other people. Okay? And the two words today, the two words today is appreciate. Appreciate is a 1650 word, common ever word. The word appreciate means to value, to set a price or value on, to estimate, to raise the value of. To esteem or va value highly. Okay? Looking at this text and looking at what we're talking about. I got to value myself enough. To get myself together before I can help other people. I got to value myself enough to get myself together before I help other people. Okay? The word understand is a 1450, 14, it's a 14, mid-14th century word. It means the ability to consider a situation with comprehension in order to be successful or prosperous. It means wise, it means skillful. It means teach, teacher, teach, or instruct. Okay? So, understand means the ability to consider a situation with comprehension in order to be successful or prosperous. Listen to that. I got to appreciate myself enough and understand life situations in order for me to be successful and prosperous. So when I do that, that means that I got to get myself together before I help other people. So let us go ahead and get started. Let us go ahead and get started this morning. I ain't got nothing about 45 minutes or 50 minutes, 55 minutes left. Let us go ahead and get started on Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 6. And it goes by this. And because the reason why we the reason why the Messiah did it like this is because we can be judging people, we can be looking at people from different lenses. We can be we can be looking at people from different lenses. We can be looking at situations from a hypocritical situation. Thinking that we're better. Thinking that we got it all. Thinking that we know how to do things. And because when we're looking at a situation as if we're better, it gives us the right to make judgment. That's what it does. When we look at the situation... And we're talking about a situation or we're talking about a people, we're looking at a people. If we're not looking at the whole point of view, we can be judging them on how we see them and not who they are as a person or as a people. And that's something that we got to take note of because then that, that's making us feel like we are above them. And not on the same level. That means that we're saying that I don't make no mistakes. But they do. 
So when we're making these judgments of people, we're doing it from a hypocritical, sometimes we can be viewing it from a hypocritical viewpoint because we don't understand the real situation. We don't understand the whole thing. It's like, and I, and I don't know if it's true or not, every person that's in prison today don't belong in prison. It's just like, if I'm not, if my wife brought to my attention yesterday, Dr. Sebi, who? I don't know if it's true though. We don't know if it's true or not. Dr. Sebi, one of Dr. Sebi's sons or grandsons, we don't know if it's true or not. But if it is, Dr. Sebi's son is sentenced to 164 years in prison. And we know that Dr. Sebi's son didn't commit no crime. So, everybody who's in jail don't belong in jail, but, but because they went against the justice system and they tried to help black people, the justice system came against them and put them in jail. So, when we look at people in jail, we look at them as all being criminals. But to ask what aspects are they criminals? Did they really commit a crime? Or did they go against the government? And the government saw them as a threat and put them in jail. Just like Nelson Mandela was on a terrorist watch list for a long period of time. And he was the president of South Africa. So, even like Dr. King was considered to be a criminal. He went to jail. How many times did he go to jail? Malcolm X went to jail. Uh, he, not, he didn't go to jail, but yeah, Malcolm X went to jail. A lot of our righteous people have been to jail. Even the people that's in jail now who sold marijuana, now they is legalized to sell marijuana. So are these people really criminals? So when we look at this system, when we're looking at judging people and how we view people, we got to be mindful of how we view them because are we viewing them from our standards or from a holistic viewpoint? That's why the title of the text today says, I got to get myself together before I help other people. Okay, it says, judge not, verse 1, it says, judge not that ye be judged. The word judge means to render, render a punishment or to condemn or to determine or to make a sentence. Or to render a sentence means a length of time incarceration. That's what the word judge means. To render a sentence for a length of punishment, it means punishment, it means to condemn, it means to determine a amount of time for people. Then it says, for what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Understand that. Because the most I said, the same measure, that the, the same way that you're looking at this people, it's the same way people are going to be looking at you. The same way that you say that this person is this and this person is that and this person is this and that person is that. It is going to be looked at you as the same way. No, that is not like you're no better than anyone else. You're no better than anyone else. If you are making, if you're committing sins, and even if you're lying, even if you're doing whatever you do, that means that you are no better than any other person that's on the face of the earth. Because there is no big greater sin than any other sin. All of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short. Whether you lie, you commit adultery, whether you overdrink, whether you being you, you commit uh, you're homosexual, no matter if you are a lesbian, no matter if you're a bank robber, you're a murderer, all of us have sinned. 
So when you think that your sin is greater than the other or less than the other, you're lying to yourself. So we're talking about rendering a sentence. It says, and, in what, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. The word measure, let's see what the word measure means because it means, let us see what the word measure means. The word measure means, um, a, it means a, to a degree. What degree? The, the harshness of it. The harshness of your judgment on somebody else. That same harshness or that same degree gonna be placed on you. So if you if you doing if you judging them with compassion, it'll be you'll be given compassion. But if you're judging them with anger, or if you're judging them with envy, if you're judging them with hatred, or whatever it is, that same degree of judgment is gonna be placed on you. If you're looking at people in, com in compassion because you understand their situation, it shall be given to you. But if you don't, it won't. So whatever, how, whatever your attitude is towards somebody else, that same attitude is going to be on you. Let us go to, um, let us go to Isaiah chapter 66 verse 5. I want to, um, I'm going to read verse 4 and 5 because the book of, the book of, the Bible is, is written by the Hebrews and for the Hebrews. Those are the nations that want to be a part of the, uh, of the nation of Israel or Ju Judah. You got to attach yourself to them in order to be able to be redeemed. And it says in Isaiah chapter 6, 6 verse 4 and 5. It says, I also will choose their delusion and will bring their fear upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delight not. Hear the words of Yahuwah, ye that tremble at his words. Your brethren that hate you, that has cast you out of my sight, say it. Let the Yahuwah be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Listen to this. The reason why people put people in jail is because of an emotional feeling of hate. The reason why people judge so harshly towards and about people is because they hate them from an emotional standpoint. However you feel about a person is actually how you would treat them, how you would see them, and all the rest of the situation. If you see them in a negative sense, you're going to judge them in a negative way, whether it's a, it's a hateful way or an envious way or a jealous way. However it is, that's your judgment on the people. And the reason why is because you, whatever your emotional connection or disconnection towards them. I hate that person. I wish they were this and I wish they were that and I wish that I wish is because of our hate. I wish they were here no more. I wish they were dead. I can't stand them. All that I can't stand them is because of an emotional hate. 
So because you hate somebody, you're going to wish death on them. You're going to wish this on them. You're going to wish that on them. You're going to wish this on them. But if you had compassion for people, you'd be like, man, I understand, man. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It ain't number love. Whatever your emotional ties to that person is what the kind of degree of measurement or judgment you will give them. Let us go to Romans chapter 14. Verses 3 and 4. Because people, people judge because of emotional ties. Emotional ties. People judge because of emotional ties. Now listen to this. Verses 3 and 4 in Romans. It says, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let him, and let, let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For El has received him. Now, who art thou that judges another servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for El is able to make him stand. Okay? Um, understand this. When we look at that, let him, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for El has received him. We judge people because of their physical possessions. We are envious because of people with physical possessions. We hate them because of it, and we'll judge them. We'll say, man, he did this to get that. I wish this happened. We did this and did that. We, have, we, hate, we hate on people because of physical possession. And we wish something happened to that person because of what they have. Because of what they have, we hate on them and we judge them. Because we may not have the same thing that they have. And we want what they got. But we don't have what they have. So we judge on them. We hate on them. And we, we do all these things from an emotional standpoint because of the physical possessions. From a physical possession standpoint. Not just from an emotional standpoint emotional ties but we do it because of the physical possessions okay so let us go to James chapter 4 and we got to check ourselves on a lot of this because it was a reason why the the, 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 um, the Lynch um, um, Lynch Willie Lynch letters came out it was a reason why the Willie Lynch letters came out because they all wanted us to be in envy and strife towards each other. So that's why they that's why they separated the house Negro from the yard Negro. That's why they made the bright skinned women look think that they look better than the dark skinned women. That's why they made women who are um, petite make her look like she's better than the women who had a little size on them. So when we're looking at it, the Willie Lynch syndrome, we still have it. Because we're judging people because of whatever it is. And it's not, it's not us understanding that, yeah, we've been up under the curse for over 400 years. We've been oppressed for a long period of time. 
So now, because we've been oppressed for a long period of time, now we got this Willie Lynn syndrome in our head. Now they give us the right to hate on somebody because, man, I don't like him because of that. You know, you haven't even sat down and had a dinner with this man, but you hating on him. You don't even know what this man did to get what he did. Whether he went to school, he worked 12 hours on his job, he went to school for four hours. He did whatever he did, he got two or three jobs. But you hating on people because of physical, and you judging them because of physical possession. They did something that you desired not to do. In James chapter 4 verse 3 and 4, I like James, I like the book of James. The book of James is for the Hebrews, and we need to understand that. I like the book of James. It says, Yea, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. James chapter 4, verse 3. Listen to this. He says, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask in evilness. You ask because of disease. You ask because of envy. You ask because of strife. That ye may consume it upon your lust. He said, you didn't ask for goodwill. You asked for every other way. Then it says, ye adulterer, adulteress. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enemy with ail? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of ail. Then it said, let me read verse 5. I feel good about this. It said, Do ye think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy? We judge because of all these things. Envy, strife, emotional, physical possession. Because of the Willie Lynch syndrome. Because of all this other stuff. We render a sentence. We render punishment. We condemn people because of our emotional problems. Because it don't sit well with us. It ain't got nothing to do with the person. Us judging people have to do with us. Because we're still suffering. We're still going through some emotional ties. The, the rendering the sentence has something to do with us. Us thinking that we're perfect. Us thinking that we're righteous. Us thinking that we got it going on. When we're more jacked up in other ways than the person we're judging. Let us go to Matthew chapter 7. And I'm talking to myself today. And if you want to take this message, you can. But this is it's me that I'm talking to today. <laughs> now let us go to verse 3. It's, and it reads, And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or... How would thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the moat that is in thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. That is a self-righteous mentality. That is a self-righteous personality. That is a bow, that is a proud and boastful person as if they got everything right. If they got as if they got it going on and can't nobody tell them nothing. That means let me help you with your stuff. Let me help you with your credit, which is a uh, a five hundred, but my credit is a four seventy five. How can I help somebody who got a five hundred credit score and my credit score four seventy five? I can't do it. Because in actuality, they can help me with mine more so than me helping them with theirs. Me reaching out to try to help somebody with their stuff without first examining me, where I am, where my state is, 
is hypocritical. I first got to sit down and look at myself and say, okay, Landon, this where you at. This where you at. This where you at. And this is what you got to deal with. Because I remember my, when my, one of my brothers, when my brother was living, I told him, I can't love you more than you love yourself. And I can't do for you more than I do for myself. I got the phrase that says, love thy neighbor as same, similar to thyself. So when you start to love yourself, you can start love, loving other people. But if you cannot love yourself first, you cannot love other people. Black people, Hebrew Israelites, you cannot love any other nationality out there first until you start loving your own black people. If you cannot love black people, you cannot love any other race of people. Because you first got to love your own ethnicity. And when you start to love your own ethnicity, that's when you can, it can spill over to help other people because you'll understand what your people go through. You'll understand what your people deal with when it comes down to the justice system, when it comes down to the educational system, when it comes down to the financial system, when it comes down to whatever else it is out there, the entertainment. You cannot help nobody else until you help yourself. We try to reach out <clears throat> Excuse me. We're trying to reach out and help other people who didn't even ask for our help. They didn't ask for your help. They didn't ask you to be a part of what they're doing. They didn't ask you to give them suggestions on them. You got to do it for you first. Then it says in verse 5. Listen to it. The Most High is calling you a hypocrite. He says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thy own eye before, it says, cast out the beam, <coughs> cast out the beam of thy own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. <clears throat> that verse is deep within itself. We first got to do some self-evaluations of us. We got to do some self-evaluations. We got to evaluate ourselves and say, hey, like I was telling my wife this week, right? We had a, I'm going to tell you something. Don't trust no doctors. Don't trust no EMS workers. Don't trust no lawyers. Don't trust. Don't trust no judges. Don't trust no police officers. Don't cr don't trust no criminal system. No educational system. Don't trust nobody. Quit putting your trust in these people who hate you. If they're not willing to put your their life on the line for you. Stop trusting them. We had a friend this week passed away because somebody hated her or did some various vindictive stuff to her and she wound up passing away because they judged her because of how they saw her so they felt like there was no need for her to be around anymore so they did what they decided to do. So quit Trusting people out here in this world. Don't trust the medical system. Don't trust the EMS. Don't trust. If you got to be carried away in an in a ambulance, you make sure that somebody is riding with you in an EMS. If you are around police officers, don't give no answers. You have a right to remain silent. Don't answer no questions when you're at a traffic stop. Don't trust no police officers. 
Don't trust no judges. Don't trust no doctors. If a doctor say I want to give you some medication, say let me do the research on the medication before I take it. Quit being ignorant to the fact that what society, what environment that you are in. Look at the educational system. They only tell you about the Greco-Roman period. They don't give you no black history throughout the whole year. Stop doing it. <clears throat> but it says, what I like about this, it says, Thou hypocrites. The next word it says, first. Deal with yourself. Deal with yourself. Black people, we cannot deal with another nation of people until we deal with ourselves. Our black, our men and women black relationships are horrible. We first got to fix, in order to, before we can go have a relationship with another group of people, we got to fix the relationship that we got with us. We first got to fix the black man and the black woman relationship. Because it's broken. Because we have allowed other ethnicities to tell us how we should be, how we should live, and all of this stuff. And because of that, that's the reason why our family structure is broken down. The justice system came in and said, I offer you welfare and food stamps. You just can't let that man come in. That comes from outside of our ethnicity. The government is not part of our ethnicity. So they came from the outside coming into our community, destroying this community by offering welfare and food stamps to the black woman. We got to stop allowing other ethnicities to influence our communities. And I was in a class one day, right? I was in a class, 90, I said 95% was European men. We had two instructors. One was a female European and a male European. One thing that a European female said, I know I can't teach this class because I know y'all men, she wasn't talking to brothers, she said y'all men she was talking to the European men. Don't want me to tell y'all anything. So what I got from that is that European men are never or try try not to be influenced by nobody but European men. European women try not to be influenced by nobody but European women and men. But we are so quick to be influenced by other nations of people where when we have created and developed majority of the stuff in our society. But we allow ourselves to be influenced by European men, influenced by European women. We allow ourselves to be influenced by Chinese people, Asian people, Mexican people. And I'm not saying, this ain't got nothing to do with, I ain't being... I ain't being biased when I say this, but what I'm saying to you is we got to get ourselves together before we help somebody else. That's why I have this interpretation. That's why I have this interpretation, and this is one of the main interpretations I use. Because I want to be influenced by my own people. Not by nobody else first. If we don't, if we don't understand viewpoints from our perspective, we can never understand it. We can never be true to it. Because the simple fact is, we are living by somebody else's viewpoint and not our own. Can't nobody tell us now. We've been in jail for 400, 400 years. Can't nobody tell us how to be when we've been hung, beaten, and killed, and raped, and robbed. We got to deal with our own issues. We got to deal with us first. So let us turn to Psalms 51.
9 through 13. <clears throat> Listen to this. When we start to deal with ourselves, we'll recognize that we, we got problems. We got issues. We got problems. We got issues. It says, Psalms 51, 9 through 13. It says, hide thy faith from my sins. Listen to that. We start acknowledging our faults. We start acknowledging what we got going on with us. It says, hide thy faith from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. That's when we can be able to start to deal with people in a righteous way. When we understand that we jacked up too. Then it says, create in me a clean mind, O L, and renew my right, renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit means give. Don't take your gifts away from me. Then it says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. The, restore unto me the the joy of thy protection, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors the way, thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. We first have to deal with ourselves before we can deal with other people. We as Hebrew black people have to deal with us. We got to stop going home, closing the store, staying in the house. And the only time you come out the house is to get in your car and go home. Go to work. Go wherever you're doing. You got to get out and know your neighbors. You got to treat your neighbors as yourself. How are you going to treat the neighbors as yourself when you don't even know your neighbors? How are you going to treat your neighbor as yourself when you don't communicate? You don't say, hey, how you doing? Let me borrow some sugar. Let me borrow some flour. How you gonna know your neighbors if you're not sitting down breaking bread with them? Now let's go to Luke <coughs> chapter 6, 37 through 42. What you say? Don't say it low. No, I'm saying some of. In our communities and neighbors, we don't even acknowledge our own race. We don't even acknowledge people. You can look at someone in the face and about to speak, and they would turn their head. Yeah. And what, what, what gets me is that people from the north come down to the south and think they're better than the people from the south. People from Miami or the Florida come up to Georgia and think they're better than people in Georgia. It's like... How you think that you're better than you're running from the same situation that I'm in? Right. Only people that I found that was humbling is people from California. But people from the Midwest and the North and Miami, they horrible people because of their mentality. Not because they were living in a better condition, it's just because they were living in a location. Oh, I'm from Miami. Oh, I'm from New York. So what? You got beat up down? Just like we get beat down here. Oh, y'all slower in Atlanta. Oh, whatever. Listen to the mentality. But we all brothers in black, man. You don't get no tre treated no different in St. Louis than I get treated in Atlanta. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 through 42. I'm about all my, I got to get ready to speed up and get ready. Then mm -hmm. it says, <clears throat> Luke is a very thorough book and he, he ran, he, he wrote it from, from a detailed point of view. So it says, Judge not, ye shall, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down and shaken together, and runneth over. That is the result. However you give somebody, it shall be given to you. 
The same way you give. If you give compassion, it's going to be compassion given to you with your cup running through. But if you give hate, you give envy, you get strife, you get jealousy, it's going to be given to you and your cup going to be running over. Then it says, shall men give unto your bosom? For with the same measures that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable to them. Can the blind, can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but every one that is perfect shall be as his master. And why, and why beholdeth thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceiveth not the being that is in thy own eye? Neither, had, neither how can thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote that is in thy eye. And when thyself behold not the being that is in thy own eye, thou hypocrite cast out first the beam of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pour out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. Acts 19. I'm going to go back to that part for a second. Acts 19 and 5, 15. Acts 19 and 15, it says, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, Yahshua, I know, and Paul, I know. But who are ye? See, a evil person know you by how you treat them. A person who's in transgressions knows who you are by how you treat them. If you are called a drunk, man, you you drink all the time, you alcoholic, you did that and other, you ain't this that and other. They know they they don't they know who you are because you by your spirit. But if you know a person who's been drinking, who's drunk, who's an alcoholic, who got some issues, you be like, man, I understand. You got some stuff going on, brother, but we gotta work on it. We got to first start praying to the Most High. Because I was in that same boat. You first have to understand how you were born to be approached. And then you approach other people. But let us go back to Matthew chapter 7 for a second. Matthew chapter 7 verse 5. Let me deal with something real fast. Matthew 7 verse 5. It says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shall thy see clearly how to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. See, when we understand that we was jacked up and we understand how we got fixed, we will understand the approaches on how to deal with our brothers and sisters. But if we never get fixed, we can never help anybody else. We can never tell somebody else how to fix their credit if our credit is not fixed. If we didn't do the hard work to fix our credit, we can't tell somebody how to fix their credit. We can't tell them the methods, the ways, who to talk to, how to talk to them. We can't tell them nothing. That is one of the most important verses. It says, Then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. If we never been fixed, we can't tell people how to be fixed. That's why the title of the text is saying, I got to get myself together before I help other people. Then the final verse, it says, 
Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. This is one of the most important things that we got to learn in life is that everybody can't be helped. Everybody can't be helped. Everybody can't be helped. Matthews chapter 13. Everybody can't be here. Let's go to Matthews chapter 13, verse 58. <clears throat> because when we have done the work, we'll see if people, by our experiences, we'll understand that we know people who really want to do the work and people who don't want to do the work. Let's go to verse thir chapter 13, 57 and 58 in Matthews. And then I'm going to go back to what I really want to tell you. Then it says this right here. It says this in Matthew chapter 57, 58. It says, They were offended in him. But Yahshua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own household. He did not many mighty works there in his own country and his own household because of their belief. You're going to have to understand that everybody is not going to be able to believe the way you believe, how you believe, and what you believe. Because I was in prayer this week, right? I was in prayer this morning before I <clears throat> got in prayer this morning. And the Most High showed me some things during my prayer time. And the Most High said, people are spiritually and physically broken. Meaning, you do not have a moral standard. You'll be willing to do whatever you got to do, how you got to do it, to get what you want. So the Most High was telling me, because we're spiritually and physically broken, can't no man save nobody. You can only do what you can do. That's why he shook the dust off his feet and kept it moving. You can't help everybody. That's why it's telling us we can't cast our pearls among swine. Dogs are male prostitutes from a biblical sense. And we cannot help everybody. No matter what we may do, how much we love them, how much we want or whatever, whatever. If that person don't want to be saved or protected or want to be new, you can't do nothing for them. You just got to let them go. Let's go to Proverbs. But also, let me read this one, then I go to Proverbs. Let us go to Zechariah. 13 and 8. This is the verse I read plenty of time. Zechariah 13 and 8 reads, And it shall come to pass in that in all the land, saith Yahuwah, two parts therein shall be killed Cut off and key and die, but the third shall be left therein. See, we also got to understand this. The decisions we make, we got to understand that everybody ain't going to be saved. 
everybody is not going to be saved. Two thirds is not going to make it. And they're not going to make it because of their unbelief. So when we decided to make decisions on who to help and who to help, who not to help, we just got to have those two things in their mind. Do they really believe? But we also got to understand that the prophecies say two-thirds of the people are not going to make it. We got to look at this. Adult death syndrome just came out in the last three years. Because some people took something that they shouldn't have taken. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 9. I'm about done. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. Chapter 9, verse 7 and 8. Because also some repercussion with trying. When you, when you think you're helping somebody, you're not helping them. Because I want us to understand that turn again and rend you. Turn again and rend you. It says, He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. It says, When you try to help a fool, you ain't going to do nothing but bring shame upon yourself. And he that rebuke a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reproof not a scorner, least he hate, least he hate thee. But then they said, rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Understand that. Reproof not a scorner, least he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. So the Most High is telling you, you cannot help fools. So when you're deciding to make decisions to try to help people, you got to make sure that they have the spirit that wants to be helped. It just showed you, he that reproved a scorner giveth himself shame. He that rebuked a wicked man giveth himself a blot. In 2 Peter, Let's go to 2 Peter and I'm done. 2 Peter. Chapter 2, verse 22. 2, 2, 2. And I'm going to tell y'all this thing and I'll be done. And then it says, But it has happened unto them according to the truth. True, true Proverbs. The dog is turned into his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to his own wallowing in the mire. He said, most people, if you're righteous, you're not gonna turn back to your you're not gonna go back to your wicked way. But wicked people are gonna always be wicked. But it was this proverb that was spoken, right? It was a leopard in the tree. And there was this man that was trying to kill the leopard, but the leopard didn't know that the man was trying to kill him. So what the man did was brought a dog and a lamb and a goat in front of the tree, in front of the leopard. And what happened was the man brought a dog and put some grass in front of the dog. And then in front of the goat, he put some meat in front of the goat. And the leopard is looking down at the man seeing that the man see that the dog is not eating the grass and the goat is not eating the meat and the leopard gave advice to the the leopard gave advice to the man and said won't you push put the the dog in front of the meat and the goat in front of the grass so both of them can eat and the man still didn't pay no attention so what the leopard did the leopard jumped down and put the dog in front of the meat and the goat in front of the in, in front of the grass, so the man cut the leopard head off. And the moral of the story is, you can't help everybody because the man really didn't want to be helped. He just wanted to kill the leopard. <laughs> and it says, also, but it says this right here: 
who he who would guide a man must draw near to the man. But you got to be, but also the moral of the story is this right here. You got to be careful who you help because the person you may help may be the same people that cut in your throat. Mm. And that's what you're voting. Mm. Understand that. The same people you may be thinking you're helping is the same people that's willing to cut your head off. So, um, Abba, as we come to you today, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and the glory. Abba, we thank you for everything you're doing and what you have done. We just ask you to continue to help us to get ourselves together before we help other people so that we can do your will and your ways. Abba, continue to let us hear the way you want us to hear, see the way you want us to see, and speak the way you want us to speak. Protect us as we travel the highways and byways, and protect us as we get ready to go through this journey, and let your people prepare physically and spiritually with what's to come. In your higher name we pray, so let it be. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Have a blessed one. You said the king of my dove was like you guinea. You reminded me for six, I pray that scene. All the darkness in the world, like you feel me. We supposed to be the light when we witnessing. Are you the disciple of the light? Only time will tell. Now your fruit should have made that boy a child of hell. Are we put him in slavery before we preach the gospel? We supposed to tell them.